do you get electricity? Um, you flip a switch. Electricity? <laughs> I'm really not too sure. Well, I'm not too much about the electricity because I'm a plumber. Did you want the technical or the just the normal layman language? Electricity. Geez, I never thought about it before. I, I think my wife is. I don't know. She might. I grew up by Niagara Falls. I know there's turbines. That's it. I don't know. It's just there. It just exists. It's just part of what is. <laughs> it's a complicated process for sure. Uh, look, is this going to take long? <laughs> You're asking me? <laughs> I'm only in grade six. Electricity? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. It's a hard question. <laughs> well, like Wobbin, where they have the big plant with all the, the turbid, uh, whatever they are, the generators in the plant. It's spotlessly clean. And... Hey, look, is this going to take long? We're so used to living with electricity, it's not surprising. Most of us never think about it. Although there are people who think about it a lot. The employees of Transalta Utilities. From a modest beginning in 1911, Calgary Power, as it was known then, employed a sturdy staff of just 15 employees. Today, it is the largest investor-owned electric utility in Canada. Transalta Utilities operations have grown to encompass 212,000 square kilometers, serving over a quarter of a million direct customers. Electricity is made by hydropower. I thought everyone knew that. Hydropower? Water dams. Yep. I think. Dams. I know this one. I thought it was hydropower. Most people do think that electricity is generated by hydropower. And they're right. To a point. Transalta operates 13 hydro plants. But they supply only 7% of Transalta's total energy output. How is the rest of electricity generated? And where does it come from? <laughs> For that story, we have to go back about, oh, 70 million years with the formation of coal. Coal is used. Coal? Uh-uh. You're thinking of the old-styled furnaces. I'm right, aren't I? Coal? I thought that was obsolete. Oh, coal. I know they use coal to produce electricity, uh, uh, but again, it, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated process. Very complicated. Coal? It's no longer used. Well, actually, coal is used rather a lot. In fact, 90% of all electrical generation in Alberta is due entirely to coal. It is estimated that on Transalta's mine sites west of Edmonton, to date, there are over 750 million tons of recoverable coal reserves. At our present rate of consumption, that will last about 50 years. And that's why Transalta Utilities continues to improve on methods of mining and electrical generation. Because this coal is a very low sulfur content, when it burns, there's very little sulfur dioxide released into the atmosphere. Transalto owns two huge coal mines, the Highvale Mine and the Whitewood Mine. Both are located near Lake Wobman. Together, they constitute the largest coal operation in Canada in terms of coal produced. 
These two mines supply 14 million tons of coal to Transalta's three power generating plants located around Lake Wobbema. Coal mining involves several stages. First, large scrapers remove the topsoil and subsoil. These soils are stockpiled, categorized, and saved. Eventually, they will be spread over the reclaimed land and seeded with crops after the coal has been mined. Second, a huge walking drag line, so called because it walks around the mine, excavates the rock and earth called overburden to uncover the coal. This drag line is affectionately called the Lady of the Lake. The boom on it is longer than a football field, which makes it one of the largest in the world. This drag line took about two years to build at a cost of $55 million. The bucket's so big that we could put 10 Volkswagens in the bucket with no problem at all. 10 Volkswagens, eh? Sure. <laughs> At Transalta's coal mines, there may be as many as nine seams of coal, six of which are recoverable. You can distinguish the seams of coal as they're separated by siltstone and shale called interval. After the drag line has removed the overburden to expose the coal, huge bulldozers, scrapers, and electric shovels move in. The bulldozers break up the surface of the electric shovels load the coal into haulers to be transported to the plant. You know, these coal haulers cost a million dollars a piece. This particular truck is capable of hauling 146 tons at one time. In fact, one truckload of coal could heat the average home for over 10 years. Well, that's all very interesting. And I love the bit about the Volkswagens. But you still haven't told me how coal makes electricity. He's right, you know. I'm with him. So what's the story? Well, hey, we're coming to that part. Once the coal is hauled into the tipple, it is bottom dumped into a hopper, where it is crushed to about three centimeters in size. From there, they're taken by conveyor belt into the live storage pile, which is right behind me. From the live storage pile, it's taken by conveyor into the plant. In the plant, the coal is crushed and pulverized again to a fine powder. Next, hot air blows the pulverized coal into the combustion chamber of the boiler. When it enters the boiler, the coal dust ignites creating temperatures that reach over 1,300 degrees Celsius. These boilers are over 20 stories high and contain miles of tubing with water which will be converted into steam. It's very much like your kettle at home. When the water is exposed to intense heat, it turns to steam. Oh, I get it. The coal is mined transported to the plant, crushed and blown into huge combustion chambers. How am I doing? <laughs> and then, it's burned at super high temperatures in the boiler. The boiler is surrounded by water pipes, and when the boiler gets hot enough, the water in the pipes turns to steam, right? <laughs> then what? Simple, really. That high-pressure steam we talked about shoots through to the turbine forcing hundreds of propeller-like blades to turn 60 times a second. In simplified terms, the turbines drive the generator, 
which in turn produces electricity. Uh, are you with me? Yep. Sure. No problem. Got it. I don't have a problem with that. Good. The steam leaving the turbine then passes into the condenser, which contains about 20,000 tubes. There, the steam is cooled and turned back into water. It is then recycled. The cooling ponds that you see surrounding the plants are man-made. They contain the water that cools the steam in the condenser. Exhaust gases from the boiler pass through the electrostatic precipitators or filters. They remove 99.5% of the solid particles called fly ash from the flue gas. Okay, okay. The coal is burned, and that turns the water into steam. The steam shoots through to the turbine, which rotates hundreds of little turbine blades. This rotates the shaft of the generator, which produces electricity. Right. Great! So how does it get to my house? Good question. When the electricity leaves the plant, the voltage must still be boosted to send it over long distances. The substation transformer increases the voltage before it is carried by the transmission lines. Near the final destination, electric voltages are reduced or stepped down at a substation before they continue. The voltage is then further stepped down before the electricity is used by you, the customer. So how long does it take? About one second. One second to go from coal dust to steam to electricity to a light switch? Incredible. But wait a minute. What happens to the mine after the coal is gone? Yeah. What about the land? They don't just leave it, do they? Huh? Of course not. All land disturbed by mining must be returned to a condition as good as its original state. Trans Alta is justifiably proud of its past achievements and current programs to minimize environmental impact. We have our own farm operations, probably one of the first of its kind in North America. Our farm operations can put the land back into a productive state as soon as two or three years after the mine operations is complete. As a matter of fact, uh, since mining started in the 60s, we've reclaimed a thousand hectares of land which has been planted into forage and cereal crops. The crop yields to date have consistently matched the area average. This is due primarily to scientific soil testing analysis and good farming practices. Sure, we're in the power production business, but not at the expense of the environment. Sounds good. <laughs> but I wonder what would happen if the company needed some coal that was, uh, you know, just a little bit too close to the community? What would they do? Move it? <laughs> it happened. In 1982, the hamlet of Keep Hills was relocated seven kilometers. The hamlet was originally located on extensive coal reserves, so the challenge became to balance the need for fuel with the needs of the community. Transalta built an 80-acre country residential development complete with a new community hall and school facility. Keep Hills is successful because the people had a part of the making of it. There's uh, 10 families at present and we know everybody and we really enjoy all the people around us. I'm a bus driver and I've been uh, living here for four years and I really like it. I think Transalta tried very hard to develop a good community for us to live in. Well, this has all been quite educational, yes indeed. <laughs> hey fella. Do you know how electricity is made? Yes, I do. <laughs> you flip a switch. You flip. <laughs> <laughs>